Howdy, howdy, folks. A-Train here with you for another episode of War on the Sea. We are back for more action as part of the Guadalcanal campaign in the Solomon Islands. <clears throat> episode C, three of this series. So let me give you a, a heads up here on this. Um, I am may get involved with the beta testing. Uh, they've, they're, they're making constantly making little improvements to the game. And one of the major issues, as you guys should well know by now, is micromanagement of every single airplane or, you know, four plane group, basically, at the strategic level. And that's apparently testing in the beta right now is to reduce that. Uh, some of the things I suggested uh, were you should be able to launch uh, multi aircraft um, strike packages with fighters, bombers, and torpedo planes together. Um, if you're going to set a patrol path, you could tell the base, launch two Wildcat fighters like uh, Port Hebrides, not Port Hebrides, um, uh, the other one. <laughs> the other one. Here, let me put this uh, graphic up on the screen for you. Uh, over here on the left, in New Guinea. <laughs> or, or it could be, it could be uh, the Hebrides, uh, New Hebrides. Um, you tell two Wildcat fighters fly north for 250 miles and then fly west to duration, you know, 337 miles. You plot that out once, you do that, uh, you know, at 5 a.m., at, you know, 9 a.m., at 12 a.m., you know, or 1 p.m., whatever. You do it, you know, sequentially here. This is the patrol path, you know. Combat Air Patrol launches out. It circles the, air, uh, the carrier for, you know, until it exhausts its fuel. Uh, then it comes in and another cap flies, takes off. So that you don't have to do this constantly every single time, every single day. It's just a royal pain in the butt. Uh, so, yeah, there's uh, some cool stuff on the way. Anyway, uh, check this out. This is a graphic I made. This is the F4F Wildcat combat radius, which is 337 uh, nautical miles, as indicated by the yellow plane uh, on Milne Bay. And you can see the line extending out to that range. Uh, so I took that, took it in a uh, paint 3D and made some circles and now you can see these are all the areas that you could cover uh if you start on the left the, the one on the far left there um at new guinea and then you have uh, milne bay uh you have Rennell island which is still gray in this picture that's the one out by itself in the in the uh, south of the two red stars uh which is guadalcanal and uh tulagi uh then on the bottom you have uh new hebrides um you also have Santa Cruz, which is the gray star out to the right side of the picture. Uh, and then, uh, so there's a circle for Guadalcanal, which also kind of represents Tulagi. It'd go north a little bit, but really, you'd, I don't know why you'd go too much north of this. Uh, then you've got um, uh, Malaita Island. And then I also did New Georgia, which is the basically almost the center of the picture. There's three gray stars in a row. The rightmost of those three gray stars is New Georgia. And then the three red stars on that island by itself, um, the middle one of those is Bougainville. So I kind of put that in there too. So if you ever, you know, advanced up the slot and got to that point, that would be your uh, combat radius. Anyway, so a uh, couple more housekeeping things. Uh, it's Sunday, it's a pool day, and we're having makeup matches. I'm in between makeup matches right now. So I thought I'd run home since I'm like 10 minutes away. Um, it's going to be a little bit before we get to the second one. So I'm going to do some live streaming and, uh, give you guys some content to watch. I'm also playing the game offline in a separate playthrough, um, simply because I'm trying to test out some resupply runs. Okay. Basically the idea being, um, if you, you send out a convoy of supplies, troops, engineers, fuel, um, and that playthrough, what I'm doing is sending a group across to Milne Bay. The idea being to upgrade that to a level two airfield and get torpedo bombers, which then that covers almost all the way up to Rabal. Not quite, but it gets close. And that's going to cover most of the shipping across the Solomon Sea. So that gives an offensive capability out of Milne Bay that you don't have with just the Wildcats. You've got the planes at, at um, whatever the port is over here to the left and I'm having a total brain dump. Anyway, 
Uh, so that's that's the plan. Is I'm going to try that. I'm also I, I want to test and see how much it takes to take Guadalcanal from the get go, because the game starts on the day the U.S. actually invaded, landed on Guadalcanal, which is August seventh, nineteen forty two. In theory, it should start maybe August fifth because it takes a day at least to sail up there. Okay. So they may need to adjust their uh, their historical documents uh, just a little bit to to cover that. Anyway, I thought that was kind of a cool uh, uh, graphic that I made here. Speaking of, let's go to the Solomon, uh, not that Solomon. There's Iron Bottom Sound, the real thing. Let's look at the southeast map. This is as of the end of episode two. We have uh, some uh, submarines we've sunk. I-19, I-17, I-43, which is a B-2. The low teen numbers... Those are B-1 class submarines. The I-43 and you'll see I-44 also was uh, sunk. Those are B-2 class submarines. Now, up at Guadalcanal, um, let's look at Iron Bottom Sound here. You can see we had previously sunk Aoba and Kinugasa, the sister ships. Those are the two Aoba heavy cruisers. Uh, then we added Kuma to the bottom. And then as that task force attempted to escape up the slot to... Um, Rabal, we sunk the uh, Akatsuki and the Asakazi, both destroyers, and that left the Tenryu limping home. And we finally caught her. Enterprise's air group did an outstanding job, took out all six uh, ships in that flotilla. And uh, that's kind of where we stand right now. Um, we're going to jump in. Let's see if there's another map I have. Nope. I don't have a bigger map. So, But you can see the... the I thought that Southeast Quadrant map had... I forty. Oh, it's just off to the side of it. Okay. So uh, I forty four. If you look at where I forty three is sunk, go due west to the edge of the map and just about just off the uh, edge of that of the map here. That's where I forty four, where we caught her with a couple of uh, Avengers, I think, and put her on the bottom with rockets. All right, cool. So enough chitty chatty, piddly poo. Let's um let's fire up the game. I don't actually have the game running yet here. Let me get that started. Uh, and I'm posting some of this stuff on the message board in Steam. Um, so if you want to check stuff out there. All right. Uh, load. This is Solomon's 01. Continue. Solomon 02 is my test playthrough where I'm learning things, trying things, testing things, and, and what have you. All right. So let's see where we are here. 9 August 1942 at 0500. What's the 05 stand for? Oh, my God. It's early. Um, we're up to 79 command points. We're cooking with gas. We have a task group X-ray, which is heading up to Malaita. Okay. We have the USS Tambor on the north edge of the slot north of Flo uh, Florida Islands. That's When I say Tulagi, that's where Tulagi is. Okay, it's Florida Islands. Tulagi is the, the naval base the U.S. built there. And then Guadalcanal has Henderson Field, which is the, the air base. Uh, there's USS Grayling, USS Thresher, and Tautog. Uh, Taltog's going west. Thresher's splitting up between Enterprise and Destroyer Group 2. Grayling is drifting up into the slot. Uh, and then Destroyer Group 1 is over here patrolling back and forth between the Solomons and Santa Cruz here to the right. Um, so we have a bunch of points we can work with. We have a bunch of things we can do. Now we're going to do the whole Willy Fufu -foo deal with the air wings and the air searches. This is what they're working on making easier. So we're going to put out uh, a pair of Wildcats. On the morning patrol, we're going to put this up in the corner here. Of course, we're going to set them up here, go about 213 miles, just get over top of this area here without getting too close to the zeros because they will they will get us. And then we'll come out this way, 339, that's good. It'll cut short there. All right, now we go to Milne Bay. Uh, new air, we're going to put up one wildcat here. And you can see 337 miles gets me here. An Avenger gets you here, 360 miles. And that's Rabal. That's the main Japanese naval base. So anybody coming out of there, you get an Avenger out there, some Avengers, and you can get them. Now, they might well put combat air patrol over because they have a lot of air bases up there. But you can kind of see what that reach is with Avengers out of Milne Bay which seems to me like it'd be a really good idea, all right? That allows you to cover all the way across the Solomon Sea. Anyway, uh, so we're going to go ahead and we're just going to send one lone... There, 
Wildcat that direction. Uh, New Hebrides. Now I remember the names, of course. Port Moresby and New Hebrides. Uh, we are going to send out a pair of Avengers with rockets. This is our anti-submarine warfare platform for air. Uh, on a course due west, 250 miles And then we're going to cut northwest to 360, 360 miles. There. So if we run any uh, submarines, we can prosecute an attack. All right. Um, now, Destroyer Group 2 is the Ralph Talbot and the Bagley. Destroyer, Destroyer Group 1 is the Farragut and the Warden. Um, the Enterprise, Task Force 16 is a little bigger than I was initially planning because we added the Phoenix in. But adding the Phoenix in and we kept the Atlanta in. The Atlanta is a dedicated, is actually a dual purpose. It's like a big destroyer. It has a lot of five inch guns and radar. So it's very good in the anti-aircraft role. They're all dual purpose guns. They can shoot at ships, bombard shore or shoot down airplanes. Um, but, and she has sonar and depth charges. So she's a light cruiser, but basically a destroyer leader. Uh, we have the two destroyers, Maori and Benham, and then we have the USS Phoenix, which is a Brooklyn-class cruiser, and she carries float planes. So we're using them as the search aircraft just so we can keep Enterprise's flight deck clear. And again, this becomes part of that whole issue, is if I could sortie off six Wildcats or eight Wildcats, I could put two over here, two over there, two over there. But you have to do it separately. So it's more cumbersome, and it's not realistic you should be able to give orders boom, you guys go do this boom 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 they launch six wildcats good to go but what we do is we take phoenix and we will uh launch aircraft get a kingfisher up get a kingfisher kingfisher that's going to be set to one with the uh, the new build so we're actually run him out we're going to stay plenty offshore we want to avoid the zeros Hmm, you know what? We may actually want to run the slot first. I'll send Wildcats that way. So, so we're going to go 200 miles this way. And then we're going to go out to duration this way. There, that's good. All right, so that gets that uh, Kingfisher up. Meanwhile, with Task Force 16, let's uh, launch a pair of Wildcats for patrol. Actually, we're going to send four. These guys are going to go into the slot, patrol up the slot. This is a Japanese air base. If we go too close, they'll pick us up and they may send planes out to get us. Uh... Let's see, which one is this? This is Shortland Islands. It is a class two. So we're going to have to be careful because if they find us, they can send bombers. In class two, you get torpedo planes. Okay. So we, uh, and, and I haven't done anything with the Japanese yet to compute, you know, flight radius and stuff like that. So, you know, bear with me in that regard. Uh, okay. Uh, Ralph Tablet. Talbot and Bagley are going to screen the Enterprise group to the west here. And then I think they're going to make a move over this in this general direction. Uh, no, actually, I think they're okay here. They'll do this. Kind of keeping them available for any submarine duty. Okay, that'll cover about the next 10 hours. Taltog is still heading this way. Um... And I think I'm okay with that. Actually, I'm going to make an adjustment, run them this way, and then run them up here. And then probably have them come north this direction. So there's Taltog's orders. Thresher is splitting up through here. Grayling is going up in the slot. Tambor is going to start patrolling this north side of the slot for any enemy ships or activity. So we'll have them go that direction. And Destroyer Group 1. All right, X-Ray's heading that direction now. The next thing we can do... Uh, let's look at this. So here's our here's our breakdown here. Blue and Helm each have um, managed cargo. 
if we click on this, we can see what we got. We have 250 mar uh, Marines or troops on each of the destroyers. So it's 500 troops. The Type C3s have 2,000 supplies. We have 100 fuel. And then we have 100 engineering, which will allow us to establish a, a, a Class 1 air, uh, airfield here. That gives us four Wildcats. So we could have had them here. If we put them right here, then we've got Guadalcanal covered. And it gives us more scouting to the north. We're coming out of the you know, southeast already. So this pushes us out this direction more to cover the slot. And then, I don't know, we could wind up with some air engagements here and whatever. Um, now, back in New Hebrides, we have some options here and some things I want to consider doing. I want to look at doing a, a new C unit. And I want to do a couple of destroyers. We're going to put some troops on them. Um, let me think about this. We may need to send supplies over here to Milne Bay too. So we may need to create another um, convoy. Try to try to go cheap with it I, because I don't think we have the fuel or anything to upgrade Milne Bay. So, as far as our destroyers go, let's start with the Farragut's. We've already got Farragut and Warden. We can uh, we can bring in Hull and McDonough. Let's use McDonough. And the key here in choosing your, your destroyers from the U.S. Navy is, keep this in mind, the Porter class and the Summers class, I believe, Neither one of them have dual purpose guns. Okay, so you see there where it says dual purpose. I don't know if you can see my mouse pointer. That's the problem. Uh, but the second from the bottom says dual purpose. No, you don't. You want destroyers. I mean, it's okay if you have multiple destroyers in a group. You, they're great for shore bombardment because if you look at the Porter class, they've got eight guns instead of uh, four or five. And that's great for shore bombardment or anti-ship, but they're not good for anti-air. So, I, you could put a regular destroyer and maybe like an Atlanta-class cruiser in a carrier air group um, and put a porter with them. That's fine. Uh, or, in this case, you might want to put a porter with the group to provide um, shore bombardment capability. Okay. So, just something to consider there when you're thinking about what ships to, to look at. Uh, also, in the description below, there's a link to the U.S. Navy Order of Battle at, at the uh, Guadalcanal invasion. So it's got the Task Force, um, Task Force 61, which was combined uh, Enterprise Task Force, Hornet Task Force, and Wasp Task Force. And then it's got the Invasion Force with all the invasion ships and the um, escorts that they had uh, and what have you. So very, very interesting information there. Uh, we want to stay with the Farragut class destroyers and click on this. And we've got this. And then we'll get the um, USS Hull. Okay, so now we got two of those. Now, that's 12 points. So that's cheap. They can carry 500 troops between the two of them. Um, oh, shit. I, that, whoops. Well, that's okay. I can go back and do it quickly. All right, let's look at Milne Bay real quick. They need 2,000. They only have 500 troops. And I've seen people, the Japanese, have attempted to take Milne Bay. So I want to reinforce the, the garrison there with at least another 500 troops. They need 2,000 supplies, 2,000 engineering, 2,000 fuel to upgrade to a, a level 2 air base. Uh, and the problem is, in New Hebrides, we only have 100 fuel and 100 engineering until next week. Then we get another 100 fuel and 100 engineering. We have troops and we have supplies. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to this, blah, 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 blah. And we're going to do, again, the um, USS McDonough. USS Hall, and like um, I think we can take um, let's just we could start that upgrade process. Hmm. Or we could look to establish a level one air base like at Rennell Island. You know what I'm saying? 
So here's the, the trade-off. Which, which way do we go? Which way do we go? We have to take Rennell Island anyway. But we've got it pretty well protected. We could probably run some destroyers out there and just drop some troops. It'd probably help to have a, a supply ship to leave supplies with them. Um, but right now, I want to. I think I want to reinforce Milne Bay and prepare it to... Um, We need two of those, and we need a Cimarron. Okay, so uh, let's change our... Swap that, swap this. Uh, okay, so now the Cimarron's in the middle of it. Uh, we'll sail in line ahead, 750-yard spacing. Uh, okay, this will be... Um, what is this? Transport Group X-Ray. Uh, this will be transport group. Um, what was the, hang on, let me see. Task unit, task force, transport, convoy, task group 62.1. Yeah, we'll be task group 62.1. Why not? Why not? Excuse me. Oh, we can't use a point in there, huh? Well, that's a, oh, more whatever. Task group 62 is fine. All right, so now we click done. Now we're committed. Uh, so we're going to manage cargo. So McDonough, we're going to take 250 Marines or soldiers. Uh, we're going to take 2,000 supplies on the Type C3. Cimarron, we're going to take 100 fuel. The other Type C, we're going to take the engineering. And the hull, we're going to take another 250. So this is going to reinforce the garrison with an additional 500 troops. Hey, what's going on, Alex? Oh, damn it. Did I not switch the freaking thing? I'm sorry, guys. There we go. That'll fix it. Appreciate someone saying that. Um, all right. So now we got everything up and running. And I, I have my screen over here, but I thought I saw it change. And I think it's because I changed from one thing to another, but not what I thought I changed to. All right. So uh, hull two. So we're going to add 500 troops, 2,000 supplies, and we're going to add fuel and engineering half of what we need to get us up to the next uh, tier of air base at Milne Bay. All right. So set a course, best possible speed, get us to Milne Bay. And look at that. It's going to take freaking four days almost to get there. It's a long time in game time. So, and another thing that I, I wanted to kind of say with the housekeeping and everything with this new, uh, I don't know how that's going to affect this. If it gets through beta, beta testing seems to go on for three to four days, and then they release the patch. So maybe by midweek, uh, we'll have that, that patch with the updates to the air um, aspect of the game. And it may be the case where I start this whole thing over again. Um, again, applying lessons learned. Like I said, I'm trying to pr figure out where the best place to go with your troops and resupply is from the start. You know, do you need to resupply Milne Bay? Do you need to, you know, go to M Malaita? Actually, destroyer group one. Oh, I have destroyers with the, the transports. So I don't need to move them in there. Um, it would probably not hurt, though, if we sent. Well, I've already launched the alert fighters, so that's okay. We'll get another uh, bird up here in a minute. All right, so we're going to get to our indications. Everybody's ready to launch aircraft. New Hebrides, I put new air, we're going to put up a couple more rocket armed Avengers, no not depth charges, rockets, rocket, we're going to send them um, north, 250 miles, and then this way, that'll do, then go out and come back over Santa Cruz, okay, very good. Uh, Enterprise is maybe ready to launch. Yes. Actually, you know what? Give me two Avengers with rockets. We're going to send them over here. I want to make sure if we, we run into a submarine, we can take it out. pretty well cover that space. Uh, all right, good. 
looks good. Let's uh, do this. Move it along a little bit. Okay, Enterprise is ready. Milne Bay, let's go ahead and get another Wildcat out. Nope, shit. I just screwed up and launched two of them. You don't have to be exact about these. The aircraft will fly to their duration, and that's it. All right, Phoenix, go ahead and put another Kingfisher up in the air. And you're going to scout west. For 200 miles. And cut this way. That'll do. Okay, cool. There should be another Japanese force out here somewhere. A, a um, landing force. Now we're going to throw, just for giggles, a couple of Avengers up with high explosive bombs. In case we come across something of interest out here that we can bomb. Drop the bomb on you. All right, uh, now another thing we can do here is our B-17s have a ton of duration. And so we could set a really long patrol path. Kind of cover the back end here, coming up over Rennell Island. And go from there. Okay, that's fine. Okay, it looks good. These guys can make their run in. This is not terribly deep water, but we can operate a submarine here. We sure, it, it sure is quiet. Well, I say that. And we find something. Now, Here's the trick. This Avenger, I don't think, has the range to get there. 122 miles. Nope. If it were flying out of Milne Bay, though, it would. It could get there, but it can't. And that's a problem. So let's throw a couple more Avengers up. Have them go intercept. That will take 1.7 hours. This guy's got some duration. This guy's got some duration. Um, this guy's coming back in. He's creeping, he's creeping. Ba, 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 ba. New Hebrides. I kind of want to run the southern route here. There. Not having really any ships over here. It's like, eh, what are we doing here? Hmm. Okay, uh, let's keep moving forward and let's hope. Kingfisher encounter, ignore. Okay, so that's this guy. So what we're doing there is we're going to give the Avengers time because if we ignore it, then um, hopefully the Kingfisher is going to come back over top of them. It will take an hour for the Avenger to get out there. And you've got an hour cooldown, which I think they're shortening to half an hour, which is great. <laughs> oh, anyway, I, I may have not finished saying what I was saying earlier, guys. I, some of these episodes have gone incredibly long, which may be fine. Aha! Oh, whoa! Uh oh! Uh -oh. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Now we have to, uh, now we have a bit of a, a sticky wicket. Thresher, you go there. Best possible speed. Enterprise. 
launch aircraft. Give me eight Dauntless dive bombers and put them on a course for destiny. There is a transport group there. See it? Two destroyers, two heavy cruisers, and six merchant ships. Now, in my other playthrough, I intercepted this group, and I have now successfully sunk... I don't think I've sunk all six. I think I've sunk four of the six. And I was doing that with Avengers doing level bombing from like three or 4,000 feet. They just, they plod along in a nice, neat, straight row. So I just put my Avengers in line abreast or line ahead formation, drove them in, and the first plane bombed the fourth from the end, the second plane bombed the third from the end, the third plane bombed the second from the back, and the fourth plane bombed the last one. So it's like, okay, everybody, all together now, bombs away! <laughs> And uh, anyway, it's tricky because high explosives will do some damage and sometimes the ships sink and sometimes they can take two or almost three hits. And sometimes a near miss will do a significant amount of damage uh, because the, the bombs still explode when they hit the water. And when they do, it causes a, a bubble, an air bubble, that can really wreck a, uh, a ship's hull. I mean, it literally will, will collapse or pick the ship up, drop it down and things like that nasty stuff all right so uh dauntlesses have taken off now we're going to go ahead and begin this uh, and this is going to be due this is where's my avengers i do not see the avengers i do see the enemy flow uh ships though And there may well be a submarine down here somewhere that I can't do anything about. I haven't detected it yet. I should have. So I've at least spotted this, this transport fleet, which is good. It looks like it's heading towards Waldo Canal. We're just going to take a quick peek and see what they got because, God, this gets tedious having to identify over and over again. There's a destroyer. All right, we knew that. There's a destroyer here. That's a uh, Yugumo-class destroyer. Heavy cruiser. Um, is that Miyoko? That we'll take a look at. Nope, it's not a Miyoko. Make it be a Takao. Yes, yeah, Takao class. Three guns up front, one facing aft, two facing forward. Two guns aft, facing aft. The crane uh, reaches inward. Uh, there's this thing here, then you've got the uh, catapults for the uh, search aircraft, and then you've got your uh, stacks, the single stack, and then the two stacks coming together. And then uh, this one is also a Takao class. So we got a pair of Takao's, a Yugumo class destroyer, and let's go ahead and identify this. So Shiratsuyu, maybe? Started a Mitsuki, because that's when they start getting... So it's got two torpedo launchers here and one here. Three guns. This one is elevated higher than the other ones. And that looks like it. It's a Fubuki. All right, so that's a Fubuki class. And then this, I mean, it's not good. It's a pain in the butt. So you go on. All right, cool. So, and then they've got their transports. The, these will all be just the the regular transport ships. Kamagawa, Maru, whatever. Kama, 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 Chameleon and stuff. All right. Those Avengers now. Now. Ah. Now this is a good thing, I hope. Let's hope. I really hope this works. In theory, that fleet will be in cooldown for an hour. So 10, 10 a.m. But the submarine wasn't there, or I would have detected her on the surface. So we're gonna get to here-ish, and Go tactical to practical with the Avengers. 
Now the kingfisher's in the picture, which is interesting. But here's what we want to do. We want to preset these guys for an attack. We want to drop them down, speed them up, form up in Vic, 50 me 50 yards, 50 feet apart, 50 yards, whatever. Okay. Bingo. Pause. Okay, here we go. There's our submarine. Okay. Now, he is 10,000 yards away. He will not see us until we get to about 2,000 yards. So, Avengers, assemble. Have this guy stay out of the way. He can go up to 3,000 feet and doodle along. Okay. So, here we go. We're going to spin it around. We're going to loop around. We're down to 390 feet. Take it down to 350. Full speed, we're coming in on the attack run. The boat is should be right over this way. Starting to level the wings here. There she is, right there. Okay. Target. Attack. It somehow breaks up the grouping when you set up the, the attack. Now, now what we do is we look at, we zoom in, we're 6,300 yards out, which means 18,000 feet, which means we're over three miles away. We have very calm seas. Uh, sea state five, that's not calm at all. <laughs> what we're gonna do is, the first thing they'll do is they'll start shooting at us, and then you'll see the bow planes go full forward, full down, and she's going into the dive and it takes less than a minute for them to dive but it does take a little bit of time so um when they start shooting we're going to kick over to the avenger view okay they've spotted us the bow planes are now in dive here we go we're in the attack all right boys go get them blast this bastard Oh, that's multiple good hits. And she'll be below the surface in a second and no longer a threat. All right, Avengers, form up. Climb out, form up. And we should get a sinking indication here pretty quick. I think they hit her two or three times. Booyah, baby! <laughs> All right, so we got her. Uh, so, 0919. Let me make a note. Make a note of that. We got another sub we've sunk. I'm going to guess that was a B2 class. Um, I wish it gave me some coordinates on the map where we were. That'd be swell. O nine nineteen break. Oh, we don't need to break. We do this. Sweet. Two more command points. One less submarine. All right, and that is right here. So, right below the the uh, the Avenger there. So let me do a, a quick screen capture function. Print screen. Take this over. Launch out paint. Sorry. 
You guys got to see some action. Save as image. Uh, and it's what, the ninth of the game? So 8 9 42 01. Save. That way I can mark it on the map later. I'll save that. All right, cool. There's that. Boom. Sweet. All right, boys, return to base. We want to get them back as soon as possible so they can refuel and rearm because we do know there's an enemy uh, group out there. We don't really want to put Destroyer Group 2 in front of them. I think maybe we'll bring them back southeast. We do want to put Thresher in front of them. And Grayling may well go take the challenge as well. All right, uh, let's get some more aircraft up at New Hebrides. There's our Avenger. Two of them with rockets. Now you guys have seen how to successfully prosecute a submarine attack, anti-submarine attack, with rocket-armed Avengers. We're going to send them due west, 250, and then north for 36. Close enough. That'll do. They'll just go to wherever they run. They hit bingo fuel, and then they turn back. All right, cool. So let's see, let's move along. Task group X-ray. Oh, shite. Look you, that's the second convoy. This is the first convoy. Uh-oh, guess what day it is. Guess what day it is, huh? Anybody? It's time to eat on some Japanese ships. We're going to send this guy back out this way. Make sure we have a backup plan. Destroyer Group 2, we're going to actually alter your course this way. And the Enterprise Task Group is actually sailing away, which is fine. Um, let's check the aircraft situation. Oh, that answers that. Phoenix can launch an aircraft, can't she? She sure can. Okay. All right, so these guys are going to have to wait. Actually, well, shoot. I was thinking about the other game when I have... In the other game, I have a two-destroyer group with a um, with a cruiser, with a Brooklyn class cruiser, so they have um, search plane capability. Now, Dauntless. Let's go ahead and start and get eyeballs on the target. Okay, pause. All right, they're nice and neatly ahead of us, to the right, which means they're over. There they are, right there. Right above the airplane, if you can't see them. In fact, let's do this. Let's look through binoculars. Oh, look, binoculars work. I can't zoom in. You can't manipulate the binoculars when you're paused, which kind of sucks. But that's, okay, so that's the transport group. So. It, all right. We have eight air, oops, resume. Bump out of that. We have eightless, eight, eightless, that was dumb. Eight dauntless dive bombers. Eight. Here's group one. These guys are going to form up. They're going to hook a left this way. Approach in. Their mission 
is going to be to get the two destroyers. If we eliminate the destroyers, the submarines can eat without threat. That makes sense? Good. I did. These guys are going to form up. They're going to cut a little further back. We're going to have them actually uh, climb a little bit. Climb to 4,000 feet. They are going to go after transports. And these transports have some serious anti-aircraft capability. So we have to kind of be leery of that. See the other groups climbing. Okay, let's go identify these guys. This looks like a Yugamo. And it is. This looks like a Kamikaze. Wait, nope. That's not a kamikaze. There we go. Nope, that's not it either. It's a minikaze. Two guns here in midships, either side of the funnel. Second funnel, black thing, whatever that is. Torpedoes forward, gun. Gun facing forward. It's a minikaze class destroyer. All right. Target three is a heavy cruiser. Miyoko class. Three guns up front, two to the rear, the crane faces aft. Single stack, doubled up stack, stuff in between. That's a Miyoko. Uh, this looks like a Miyoko as well. There's also little towers on the, the, the turret here and here, uh, ostensibly for spotters or for, you know, periscopes or something for gun direction. Okay, our aircraft are coming around. Let's go ahead and pause. And then this, the rest of them we know are, are uh, transports. Kamagara, Galamaru. Everybody's identified. So let's go back here, go back here. And here's how we're going to do this. We are going to use aircraft. This is aircraft one in the lead and three is on the right wing. So th this gets a little tricky, but I'll show you how we do this. Okay, we're going to choose aircraft one and then we're going to select with the, with the the arrow. Then we're going to click two and four. Break formation. Okay. So they're breaking formation now. They will be in there. They're flying individually, but I'm going to group them up. Okay. So we're going to select Dauntless one, Dauntless three. They are still in formation. Okay. We're going to have them. Uh, Descend to 3,200 feet. Okay. They are going to go in and evict formation. They're going to target the lead, Yugumo. Ah, damn it, I screwed it up. Okay, hang on. Uh, okay, let me do this again. Click. You click the, the, tri the pointer, and then this one. Form up. See, now they're formed up. There's the color code and everything, okay? So now, you got to go back and click this thing because that's the lead aircraft. So this is already selected really. So that, that, and hit that. Now we hit V 
and now one and three will attack the lead Yugumo. Now, let's repeat that process. Two and four, form up. I have them drop to 3,250 feet. Target the Minikaze. Select the one by itself. Click attack. Dauntless one and three attacking Yumigo, y y Yugumo. Now, see that's when I accidentally split them up. Then it corrected. One Dauntless attacking Yugumo, which means that's aircraft one and three. Two Dauntless attacking two Minikaze, which is aircraft two and four, okay? So, that's that. Dauntless five. I'm gonna actually have these guys cut their speed because I wanna prosecute this attack first. Get these guys out of here or in a position to monitor. Did he it say? Nope. Okay, he's not in here. Good. All right. All right, let's go. You see they'll re reshape their formation a little bit. And then we'll make a decision on these guys. If we want to attack these escorts again, or what we want to do, or if we want to go in individually against the transports. I'm not worried about the heavy cruisers. They, yeah, they pack an AA punch, but so do the transports. All right, here comes the flak. thousand yards you'll start seeing the flashes you'll start seeing the flashes there come the flashes wow they were kind of slow on the drop here we're about to go into the dive oh you know what these guys don't have any air radar oh the yugumo may Good hits, good hits. Flying boys, get the hell out of there. Dauntless five. Break, turn this way and orbit. Jesus H Christ, what are these guys doing? Themselves killed because they were stupid. Yes, there's one down. The Minikaze sunk. Yes, come on, kill the Yugamo. Kill the Yugamo. Kill the Yugamo. Come on, dummies. All right, so we're going to have. Yugamo is burning. She's She got hit good. Minikaze is toast. That's awesome. That's a good strike there, boys. We could send in one more. Oh, her after deck is a wash. She's sinking by the stern. Okay, so now here's what we're going to do. Let's go check on our other guys. These two are good to go. These two are both hit. Wait, let me get a better view of the... These two are good to go. Okay. Okay. So, aircraft two and four, I'm gonna put you guys on a course to exit the battle space. Aircraft one and three, I'm gonna put you guys on a course to just orbit and just kind of watch what's happening.
right. Let's go back to the Yuga mode. Let's see how we're looking. Burn, baby, burn, ba -ba -ban -da -da -da. burn, baby, burn, burn, baby, burn, -da 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 -da. oh, you know what we need to do? We need to, um, we're going to need to capture this location, and the Minikaze was sinking, uh, Minikaze, Minikaze, hello, work my pen. At 09.37, let's say. Is it sunk day? Yes, it's sunk day. All right. Uh, all right, so these guys are, are, are orbiting. Let's check on Dauntless 5 and his orbit. And I know this is kind of a bitch to have to do this. Yes, we got both of them. Ha <laughs> ha! Yuga mode toast. 0940. Oh, it's a good day so far. We've sunk up sub and two destroyers. Now, what the hell is the freaking problem here already? Four o'clock. Have we been going for an hour already? Son of a bitch, we sure have. Well, it's that time for my laptop to crap out on me. Okay, so now we have a decision to make. Miyoko's railing around. These guys are flailing. They don't know what to do. We could send in... Uh, oh, Jesus. That would just be swell if Miyoko were to ram you know, one of these other ships. We could go after the transports, or we could go after the warships. What do you guys think? Wait, let's do this. Let's look at let's look at Miyoko. These are both Miyoko class uh, heavy cruisers, and let's do a little research in the recognition manual, right? Miyoko, what do you have? What is your name? <gasps> uh oh. They have depth charges. That is no bueno. They do not have active sonar. They have passive. But they have depth charges. I, that does not make me happy in my pants. Hmm. Depth charges mean they could bomb, 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 bomb our ass. That said, they only have passive sonar. Which, okay. <sighs> Dauntless 5. Uh, break. Making a left turn. All right. So the question is, do we go after the the heavies or the transports? We'll do more damage to the transports, and with a pair of submarines and subsequent air attacks, we can really jack up their style. here for just a minute. They have a complete cluster going on down here. Now with it separating the ships like this, it makes them a little more difficult target, but it also uh, breaks up their anti-aircraft ability. So we could target one aircraft at each of the transports, or we could put two aircraft on each of the escorts. I think we want them to keep going. Or we could do two airplanes to a Miyoko and do a couple of the um, guys over here. So, uh, all right, the executive decision. Break right. Who 
whoever is side on to us. Pause. All right. You, you, you. Break formation. Dauntless eight. You. Target. Attack. Dauntless six. Target. Attack. Lead. After the lead Miyoko. And you are going after this guy. Execute. Yeah, come in a little bit. They should swing back over to the left here. I don't know if they'll make a full circle. Because I took them at 4,000 feet. Yeah, I guess they will make a full circle. Or they'll swing back after making an S-curve and killing some altitude. Which is a little bit goofy. Because as I've mentioned before, and I've got to reset my stupid YouTube. Um, it's a little bit goofy because... Um, Hold it. Pause. What aircraft am I looking at here? This is Dauntless 7. He's going after that Kamagawa Maru. Go after that one instead. If you miss, you might hit the Miyoko. Um, dive bomber attacks generally started from 8,000 feet, and they pulled out at like 1,800 feet, and then they came off at you know, 100 feet. <laughs> Wave top height. And these guys, this is a mess. These guys have collided. Which means they are sitting ducks. And you know what? Aircraft 7, retarget, Miyoko. Attack. Go. They are just sitting there waiting to get the crap bombed out of them. All right, boys. Hold it together. Let's get her done. You can do this. You can do this. Leads in on the attack. Go get the Miyoko. Six, eight, break, form up, climb, bitches, get the hell out. Damn it, they're coming, they, they went right back over the stupid group. Six went down, we lost two, two birds. Oh, but did we hammer some bitches. That one's hit. Oh, that one's hit. Oh, this might have just been a beauty of a strike. This one is toast. That ship's sinking. That ship is down in the water, but I want to see the Miyoko. The Miyoko is effed up. I thought the Miyoko was effed up. Did we not hit the Miyoko with all that? We did hit the Miyoko. We hit it with two bombs. Maybe it's the fact that she's latched up with this ship. Because it wasn't this one. It was this one. Of course, it could have been two of the 100-pound bombs. These guys carry 1,000 um, pound, 1, pound and then two 100-pound bombs. 
All right, Dauntless five. Two destroyers. We got a that that guy's sinking. He's going down. He's going downtown. Oh, secondary's on the other one. That's a beauty. And secondary's on this one. Yeah, you can go ahead and sink. You're toast. Yeah, this convoy's in a little bit of disarray. She's dead in the water. This one is dead in the water. Jesus H, what the heck are you doing here? Come on, Firefox, work with me. Secondaries, tertiaries, roast some marshmallows. Goodbye, you're toast. Now it's your turn. This guy may may survive. He didn't look like he's sinking. He's got fires raging though. Now this dauntless group here do which now we have three birds now we, we have three we should have three birds there's dauntless eight okay hold on do we have like two planes in the same place Alright, let's just see if we can get this other uh, transport to sink. Everybody think sink. Sink, sink, sink. You can do it. She's dead in the water. Oh, a couple of nice explosions might do her in. All right. Now I can get my video back up. So I can see. Chat. Struck me as odd. We hit that Miyoko twice. We'll see in the post results. Actually, I may be able to see now. Yugumo Minakazi sunk. No damage to Miyoko. I'd say I hit the Miyoko twice. This one sunk, and this one's got heavy damage. Come on, you can sink. You can sink. It's okay. Pain will go away sooner. Oh, look, part of a Pop Tart. Left a 
for my breakfast. Now, watch the clock. Because basically, the damage control cycle is two minutes. Okay? These fires are burning on deck. I would suggest there are still fires burning below deck. And they probably only have one damage control crew. Maybe two. I've never checked. But at some point, something vital is going to go and this bitch is going to sink if they don't get these fires under control. Clearly, engineering is in trouble because they're not going anywhere. Okay, fires, the external fires are out. But they're back. Oopsie. And what happens is if you don't get fires under control quick enough, they will spread from compartment to compartment and from inside to the deck or maybe from the deck to inside I'm not sure but we've got to wait, wait this out because we don't want her to sink or would, would sink and because we were impatient she doesn't sink that's more bombs we have to drop or torpedoes we have to launch Surprised the fire hasn't spread forward or aft. We're at 10:08. I think she's sinking now. She's cooked. Look how the paint's just covered, just colored. This here's getting more and more burnt. It looks like. What I'd really like to know is what these things were laden with. The USC-3 class transports will carry 1,250 troops. Yes, we got them! <laughs> it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, a beautiful day for the neighbor. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? First one was about what 0955, and this one was 12 uh, at 10, 12. So that one took a while, and that's what I'm saying. The damage control, they couldn't contain the fires, so you are screwed at that point. All right, boys, back to the Enterprise. We lost two ships, but we sank 16,542 tons and picked up 17 command points. That is almost three destroyers, two good destroyers, as it were, air quotes, good. That's four submarines. Um, that's a light cruiser. That was a hell of a strike. Dauntless. RTB. Avengers, you're coming back. Thresher, you're cleared in. Grayling, you're cleared in. And this... Uh, okay, let's hit this. There she goes. Phoenix is ready to launch aircraft. That's good. Now, yeah, now the destroyer group can... I'm actually going to change Enterprise's course to the west. That will put her closer to both uh, potential uh, groups. I'll put her in like a 200-mile circle here. I'll take the next 20 hours. Okay, good. Okay, so this Kingfisher is on its way back. This one's on its way back. So we need another... 
Uh, we need Phoenix to launch their other Kingfisher. We'll see what we can find. Alright, where are you heading? Tautog is heading that way. Belay that order. Come this direction. I may have them come this way afterwards. This puts them in a position for them to be more flexible. Okay, we need this guy. Oh, we gotta get, hang on, ten, it's only 10.15. No, don't do that. You're just gonna loiter over the area. Because after an hour, we will find them. I think we're out of range for surface action, but Thresher may be in the play. It may be in play here. How far is Thresher away? Ooh, 15 nautical miles. Ugh, that's still a long way. <sighs> Damn it. This this puts us in a pickle. This is not what we wanted. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to have to kill another hour, which will get those Avengers time to get back aboard and get turned around. We may get an attack with Thresher in the meantime. key is to get an encounter and then grayling yep you're doing fine enterprise we are going to switch your course and move you this direction and we're going to launch eight dauntless And we may have to kill some time here, but we can use them as scout planes in the meantime. This is that stupid hour cooldown thing. Okay. Uh, we're going to ignore. That Kingfisher's outbound. This Kingfisher is going to come back and track. Meanwhile... Oh, shit. Okay, fine. Look what we got. We got a new air a base. <laughs> All right, boys and girls, we have us a new base, and it is going to be a... <gasps> We need 500 more supplies. Ah, oh, wait, five, no. There we go, yeah. Now, we got searchability. This is good, this is real good. So now we're gonna start by working our way to the north, I think. Let's recenter the map here. We're gonna do our first search out this direction and then cut over that direction there. Sure. Looks good. Now will be in the Tambors area. Now, Transport Group X-Ray. You folks are to expedite. Return to Espirito Santo. Santo. Is Espirito Santo. Yes, that's it. Destroyer Group 1 now can proceed a little more northerly because they will have air cover to help guide them. All right, Avengers are over top, but Avengers are returning to the ship. Thresher. Oh, <laughs> shit.
shall we begin? Daylight attack. We're at periscope depth. Energize the radar. Guys, don't put your periscope up. If you're at periscope depth, just turn on the radar. Okay, that's all you gotta do. Okay, we're gonna start. And then we're going to very quickly scan the horizon ourselves. We know we have targets. There they are. All right, so there they are. We know what they are. It's a pair of Miyoko's and four transports. So we're going to do the dealy bop real quick with them. Make sure they didn't change the ships up on us. It happened early on, but I think they corrected that, that fault. So Miyoko, boom. This will help our targeting solutions. These are the transports. Kamogawa Maru, check. 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 Okay. All right, we have identified the ships, and we have a convenient kingfisher in the area. Oh, isn't that sweet? Thanks, guys. Appreciate you being here and being part of the team. We're going to have them cruise over here to the northeast side. Hopefully staying out of AAA range. And they're going to just provide spotting for us the whole time. So we can move in and prosecute a, uh, execute a torpedo attack. Okay. So Kingfisher, let's just set your, let's get you up to 120 knots. And let's take you up to about 4,500 feet. Okay, cool. Meanwhile, aboard the Thresher. Okay. We need to build a speed run. And I don't think we're going to... They're moving 11 knots. That's not terribly quick. states five yeah so with that in mind we are going to drop down to 60 feet which means we lose our radar but that's fine <clears throat> because we have the kingfisher doing the spotting for us and I don't know if all right now we need to do some research let's go to the Miyoko Oh, really? Never mind. Uh, let me see here. What? How far away are we? We're a ways off. We're 15,000 yards. Quickly. Uh, 45,000 feet, 9 miles away. Surface the boat. Should be able to close the distance here a little bit. They do not have radar, surface search radar. 20 knots, close the gap. So now, let's do a little more research. This Thresher is a Tambor class submarine. Visible horizon four nautical miles. Radar detection 20 points or 20%. So we should, should being the operative word, be able to make this run to close the range. We're 15,000. The problem is 
our torpedoes only have an 8,900 yard range. So the problem is we started this encounter way too far away. And with the, sh the speed they're moving, they're moving 11 knots. We're now up to 20 knots. So actually what we may do is break, come this way. Let's get ahead of them. Hopefully their lookouts can't see us. We'll know if we start seeing shells landing around us. They're also going to increase the time compression in the tactical view. So we could speed this up like to like 300 times I think and then we'll go zoom zoom now solution on the Miyoko now yeah solutions improving as we get closer just under 13,000 yards. Whoa, 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 what was that? Shit. Dive, dive, dive. I think they saw us. Either that or they just shot at... Yeah, I think they saw us. Yep, they've seen us. Dive the boat, dive the boat. That's close. Get it down, get it down, get it down, get it down. Shit, there was a close one over top of us. Oh, damn it. Took out our stupid main gun. <laughs> that sucks. Oh, well. We're not going to be using that anyway. All right, let's get this down to say 90 feet. Okay, so now what we're going to do is break. Whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to break with this and we head north. Yeah, they're coming after us. Take us to 100 feet. We can't very well repair the main, the five inch gun when we're underwater, so. I imagine they have increased speed now that they've left the, the, uh, What we could do is they do not have active sonar, they have passive sonar. I want to keep making the speed run until they get closer, then we'll, we'll slow down and go to silent running. Actually, we could go to silent running now. Which is kind of dumb. We weren't doing any repairs and reloading anyway. Torpedoes are ready to go. If anything, we're going to set we'll spread action here. I'm going to try to get up here and then cut the corner on them. They're going to close the distance, though, this way. We may have to change the course of our Kingfisher because she might be coming under a lot of anti-air fire. They're cut 
our speed to four knots. Switch to our kingfisher here. Yeah, they're they're gonna be getting a little close. That's several thousand yards, but I'm gonna break from that, and we're gonna have you actually come around to the right. Skip off of this group. It's more important that we keep these guys in sight. Because now we're playing ball. And I want you to ascend to 5,500. Current 25 knots. Okay. All right, so memo to us, you can't get too close. I mean, we weren't that close. We are you know, 12,000 yards, 10,000 yards at least. That's 30, that's 30, that's six miles away. I mean, I'm sure they got good binoculars. We have a layer. There's no layer. We drop down to 200 feet. Now, here's the thing. What we want to do is see what we can do and not cavitate. So what I'm watching for is air bubbles. The deeper you go, the less chance of having air bubbles. That's cavitation from your propellers. And then you can run a little faster speed. Yep, see, we started cavitating there. We don't want to cavitate. Hold, please. Break. Change course. This way. Bring us up to 60 feet. Now, let's stay. It's our range 2,190 yards. It's not much warning. Start giving me a solution on this, Miyoko. Oh shit, we're cavitating. Did they stop? No, they're at speed 15. Okay, come on, boys. Shit. knots. Nice and easy. Nice and quiet. Nice and easy. Nice 
nice and quiet, nice and easy. They're turning. Okay, so break, come left. Two degree spread, aft torpedoes, fire. Dive the boat. Come right. Full rudder. Keep the speed down. Now the call on them would be transients, 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 torpedoes in the water. Take us down to 250 feet. Get us deep. Where's the torps? Torps are coming. They're turning a little bit. These may miss. Okay, so come right. Okay, we're down the we're down to 200 feet. Where are the targets? Center your rudder. Cavitating at eight knots. Oh, we'll take it down the Seventy feet. Okay. Meanwhile, I'm pretty sure our torpedoes missed. No, they didn't. Oh, no, they didn't. Oh, no, they didn't. He just made a big boo boo and turned right into them. Dud one. Dud two. Boom, there's three, he's good, and dud four. You piece of shit. Bureau of Naval Ordnance, ladies and gentlemen, 75% failure rate on our torpedoes. Ain't that swell? That's terrific. I'm so thrilled to have these torpedoes threatening the life of my men and ship because they're such crap. All right, Kingfisher, now that we've gotten these guys out of position, go back northeast. We, on the other hand, that's unbelievable. Jesus Christ. Four, three of the four torpedoes failed. We couldn't even get 50%. That's pathetic. All right, let's lock on to us and make sure we're not cavitating. And we're going to come east a little bit here. Now, they're looking for the datum point. They're looking at the place where the torpedoes came from. 
which is the place where I am vacating as fast as relatively possible. Let's go ahead and take it down to 300 feet and see if we can get nine knots without cavitating. Full right, Roger. Just bring us east. That's unbelievable. Jesus. Well, They had to make uh, Japanese crews feel better about themselves, you know. Oh, there's torpedoes coming. Well, we have a one in 25 chance, you know, one in four chance that they'll be good. <laughs> so everybody just kind of hold your breath here and we'll see how it goes. But that lead Miyoko is still making 25 knots with a hole in its side. That's ridiculous. Really, seriously. You just got hit with a freaking boomstick and you're making 25 knots? Get out of here with that crap. I can see. I mean, it doesn't even look like she's flooding. Alright, let's continue our turn right here. They're only 750 yards away. They're close. Cut speed just a little bit here. We're at test depth. Oh no, we're below test depth. We're at test depth for a Gato class. Oops. Yeah, we're not at crush depth. Okay, back to this. Center up your rudder. It's too bad we don't have a layer to work with. That would help us out. our speed and our noise here just a little bit. Remember, they do not have active sonar, but they do have passive sonar. So they could hear, you know, if we were making a bunch of noise, they could they could hear it. But we're not. We're in silent running. We're not cavitating. Now Miyoko is turning. So maybe she did hear us. Maybe she heard me talking. cut speed and come up because if we get caught below our test depth we're going to be in trouble wait full left rudder That second Miyoko isn't moving. Okay, she's turned and she's past us now, so we're going to... Now we're moving into her baffles. Let's just scoot east here a little bit.
Wait, are these two about to have a meeting of the minds? This could be rather comical. Am I being summoned? Not yet. Okay. Lost one. Oh, wait, 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 I forgot. We may need our Kingfisher's help. Uh, Kingfisher went back looking for those other guys. All right, so we're going to bring him back around. We, we need his help. We need eyeballs over these Miyokos. That said, how far is it to these guys? Eleven thousand yards, and they're moving fifteen. Yeah, they're moving way too fast. We are not in any position to catch them. It kind of sucks that we just lost. Ah, oh, shit. Oops. Shouldn't have done that. All right, we're at two hundred sixty feet. I'm kind of surprised that we are, um, oh shit, we've been reloading the whole time. Oops. Okay, you know what? Let's, um, yeah. I thought I had ordered that earlier. That may have been why they were able to get as close as they were. There we go. Two thousand five hundred yards. Come left. Right, right, right. Reverse your rudder. All right, rudder. Where's the other Miyoko? That would answer that question. Okay, we're about a thousand yards apart. She is moving out too. They may be circling kind of like the destroyers do. I still can't believe we had frickin' three of the four torpedoes fail. Good lord. That is so disappointing.
rudder. Now we're in the baffles of the first Miyoko, which means the second one should not be able to hear us. The baffles are the bubbles formed from cavitation of the, the propellers. Once again, are they going to have a meeting in the mines? Because that would be rather comical. I'd love to see that. What's the biggest torpedo you got? How about a Miyoko? need to do is lull them to sleep and let them see if they will head back up to their convoy in a straight line. Jesus, the ballsy maneuver. Stay in that hard right rudder profile. up to 200 feet. We are cavitating. Okay, we were released from ultra quiet, so we're going to resume reloading. Three minutes. We'll have two more tubes ready, or one more tube ready aft. Kind of trying to use the aft torpedoes. Yeah, you know what, guys? I Actually, I think I'm going to need to pull out of this one here. I'm going to need to head back up to the pool hall. Minor damage to the Miyoko. We suffered minor damage, which is not a big deal, but... Now... We can do another airstrike, I think. But those guys aren't going to be available for an hour. Again, so Thresher. Let's move Thresher east. And we got Avengers. These guys are RTB. There you go. I wanted to see. All right, Enterprise. We have six adventures. Do we want to do this with torpedoes or high level bombing? 
The high level bombing seems pretty effective against the um, larger ships. They could do AP. We're going to go after the two Miyokos. Meanwhile, Task Force 16, have you guys pull southeast. I just want to keep this Kingfisher over top of this group. All right. Let's see what we can do here. Would love to get the Dauntless and the Avengers in in the same attack. Sure, you are going a little far south for liking. Although I do need, you know what? No, Kingfisher, you're fine in that regard, because Thresher is covering that southern. Okay, hour and a half. Everybody has the duration to make this happen. There they are. Holy shit! Thresher's having an encounter. The question is, will the Dauntlesses be caught in it? Oh, ho, ho, ho. oh, I love it when a plan comes together. Energize your radar, please, sir. We'll go ahead and start, and we'll hold right there. Thresher is at the back end. Oh, we have a layer, too. Well, that's nice. 7,000 yards, that's not going to do us any good. Thresher is not going to be able to prosecute this attack. So we're just going to keep him out of the way. Move him off to the east. Um, he can keep his radar up and going. All right, the Kingfisher is the eyes in the sky. So, good Lord, we got a lot of airplanes to manage here. Okay, so Kingfisher 1. Kingfisher 2 is way up here. I'm not really fussed with them. But they can come down here and get into the party. Kind of hang out in this area here. Sure. Okay, we've got Dauntlesses and we've got Avengers. The Avengers are heading the wrong direction though, so... Proceed to here and circle. So if they do anything, they're going to come in. Okay. Avenger Flight 2. Two air two aircraft. You guys are going to do the same thing. You're going to climb to 
3,400 feet. And go in circle. Okay, now for the Dauntlesses. Dauntless three, boom, 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 boom. You guys form up. You guys are gonna go this way. We're gonna set up an attack run on the lead Miyoko. real quick okay you guys are gonna fly heading like this and then set in on the attack okay let's make this happen Avengers have AP high explosive. No, they have a armor period. They have AP armor penetrating bombs, which means they really should be the ones doing this, but they can still bomb the stupid transports. Thresher. Actually, I'm gonna have you break. Fifty feet should be good enough for them. They got the gun fixed, so we're back to full full strength. Okay, the Miyokos are maneuvering, which changes things a little bit, not a lot. They may know that Thresher is there. Or they may just be turning to face the threat axis of the aircraft. Thresher has gone deep. south then. Make sure we're not cavitating. We are cavitating. Wait, there's a layer. It's 150 feet. We should be safe below the layer. Should, being the operative word. Let's come up to 200 feet. And switch back to the airplanes. This guy's sitting dead in the water. Huh. 
Huh. I may have created a little bit of confusion here. Alright, so. Dauntless 3. Regroup break. Turn in. Meanwhile, Thresher. <gasps> Ooh, hey. Hey. These guys have stopped. I like it. Alright, stop what you're doing, because I'm about to ruin the image and the style that you're used to. Alright, let's go back. guys are plowing in. They're good. Alright, boys. Dauntless 7. Attack. Dauntless 3. Attack. Alright, boys. Put some ordnance on target. Let's go. Let's get her done. It's for the Big E. Oh, everybody's in the dive at once. Oh, that was a lot of explosions, boys. That was a lot of boom boom. A lot of big boom boom. A big boom boom. We lost two Dauntlesses in the attack. Alright, boys, climb, climb, climb. guys can GTFO. That said, let's go see what we did. Oh. She's burning, but not that bad. Oh, now she's hurt. Alright, you know what that means? Thresher, where are you? How close are you? Alright, take it back to the aircraft. Avenger 15. Break. Actually, you know what? That's kind of. No, it's not the stupidest thing in the world.
Okay, start building the solution on this Miyoko. Take us down to 200 feet, get us below the layer. Stern tubes are loaded. Okay, that does that. Hey, Omega Studio News, Talk Show T, all that long name you got. Howdy, welcome aboard, how are you? Okay, we got two Avengers coming in. The Dauntlesses are going to leave the area. Low six knots. Low six knots. I want these Avengers. Actually, keep your speed down. Five knots. That second Miyoko is dead in the water, I think. Okay. Drop it down to 3,000 feet. Brake. Target the Miyoko and attack. Wait a second. Hold up. Thresher. Target Miyoko, come up to 60 feet. Stand by four tubes. Hard right rudder. Go, come on. Uh, we need a solution. We need to clear this one. around takes up to 50 feet stand by four torpedo spread these Avengers may keep him tied up while we finish this You gotta get us around. Ninety nine percent. Go. Damn it. Come on. Come on. We gotta get up. <sighs> Bombs hit. That's good. Hopefully, I'll slow her down. Cavitating. Let's see what she does. Okay, hold on. All 
All right, boys, y'all. Get the hell out of here. She is hurt. She's making 12 knots. She's stuck in the left turn. Listing to starboard, which is ideal. This is ideal. If she comes around, then that will actually put us in a really good firing position. reason being, ideally, if you were going to take a torpedo, all right, what does a torpedo do? It blows a hole in your hull, right? She you started taking on water. You want, you would want the attack to come from this side, the starboard side. See how low the ship is in the water? He's effectively raising the water line, okay? So at that point, the torpedo hits, but once you level out the ship out of the turn, it raises that area at least partially out of the water. But we're on this side. He's lowered the water line here, which means we hit with torpedoes that actually work and explode. It's going to put that deeper underwater. Now, I don't think that's included in the game mechanic, but that's that's how this stuff works in real life. Shit. He's on a constant bearing. Both Miyokos are on a constant bearing, which sucks. Come on, keep turning. Oh, his heading. No, his heading's coming around. 218. All right, we're going to put two fish in the water then. Damn it, it's not going to work out that way. This Miyoko's listing. Oh, this Miyoko may die still. All right, so both the Miyokos are hit hard. So here's what we need. We need Avenger 14. Thresher, here's what you're going to do. We're going to put you in a... I don't want to use torpedoes on these stupid transports. They're not, I mean, because then we may have to reload. All right, so what we're going to do is put Thresher in a right-hand turn. Take her below the layer. And get her aft end facing this Miyoko. And hope we can get this in here. All right, Avenger 14. Or 11, excuse me. All right. Avenger 11. You guys are going to break formation and start making your way this way. Increase your speed. Let's get this done. Because we will come back and re engage the transports at a later time. We're going to do is we're going to split these guys up into two flights, two elements. So we're going to take um, break. OK, 
okay. Taking down the 3,200 feet. So now, Avenger 11. All right, guys, I hate to do this to you. We're going to have to hold it up there I have to go all right we're not gonna retreat we're gonna we're gonna hold right there and I'm just gonna pause the game and all right I don't know when oh wait this is kind of stupid I gotta turn off the stuff still uh, it may be later this evening or later tonight. I got to go play multiple racks of pool. So it'll probably be after nine. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe though. And turn on that bell icon so you know when we go live again, which will be later tonight. Um, and see how this uh, final bombing attack and any work with the Thresher goes. I know, real exciting. But hey, that was two and a half hours of streaming. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you'll like, share, and subscribe. Join us on Twitch at A underscore train underscore games at Discord at A dash train space games. And your donations are greatly appreciated at paypal.me slash A train games. It's paypal.me slash A train games. So I uh, hope you enjoyed it. I hope you have a great day, night, evening, morning, wherever you are on planet Earth or beyond. I'm A train. It's over. And I'm out. <laughs>